Okay. Live. Welcome right now. to In a Perfect World with your host. In a perfect world. A perfect world, Miss Mary, and I am Flash. I know. I was gonna say you could you could use your your new voice and everything for that one. <laughs> maybe maybe yeah, later <laughs> later on down the show. I I'm just starting to work on that one. Oh but okay. Yeah, okay, I well. I came up with a voice that we need to find somebody that fits, and I'll demonstrate it through the show this evening, but not yet. Well, it it is a Truman Capote esque <laughs> kind of voice. kind of yeah. It's hard to explain. Anyway, Grimner. Me and Mary are live on Real Liberty Media tonight, the 17th of December, 2019. And you want to do the hellos to the bots and bodies? The hey there, hi there, ho there's. Who's the ho? I don't know. Ho, 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 fucking ho. Okay. <laughs> that time of year again, baby. Lay down and smile. Ho, ho, fucking ho. What a crock of shit. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> and you finally pulled the accent off, and it's in a horrible song like that. <laughs> Figures. Well, okay. Have anyway. you heard that song? Oh, that yeah. Yeah. Song. yeah. I lived in Scotland okay. and England for a bit. So, <laughs> I was, so you got... I was let in on some English and Scottish crap that I forgot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well. Yeah. Hi there. Hey there. Ho there to all the bots and bodies. I see right up top Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by uh, Beetle. Hey, Beetle. How's Pippi? Beetle and Pippi. I, always, I know. I got to ask about Pippi. <laughs> yeah, I know. On Beetle's lap. Good thing I know Pippi's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why? I also see Grimner. <laughs> hey, Grimmy, he is the RLM god, don't you know? Hey there, yep, Dane Linden, Kansas. That's right, pretty much. Yeah. He can get in there for a far, uh, for, for between, for between, for a far, for a for sure, for, 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 for. Okay, moving along, seeing as how yeah. I'm having a, a vocal malfunction. Moose Goyle, the breathe, lovely Moose breathe. Goyle. Moose Goyle. Breathe, breathe, the breathe. lovely Miss Kate down in Florida. <laughs> Florida. Uh, hey, oh, oh, there you Kate, go. Down by yeah. We got an anti in the chat as well as an Asmodeus Asmo uh, is at least logged in. Got a Chalsa Denis. <laughs> he forgot the O or she, whomever, oh. forgot the O again. But we got an echelon to make up for it. Just does Your that to get you. Oh, Cause see how it you're you're a grandma Nazi. I mean, a grandma or Nazi. A grandma or Nazi. I'm I'm <laughs> not Nazi. I'm Nazi. I know nothing. <laughs> Moving along. Schultz's, <laughs> I'm here. Schultz's little sister <laughs> Olga. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. There you go, Schultz. <laughs> anyway. I'm a distant cousin, four times removed, kind of. Mm. I yeah. finally found out what that meant, and I still, and, you know, if you ask yeah. me what does yeah. that mean, I would tell you I don't have a freaking clue because I forgot. But, oh. in any case, long, huh? uncle told me, and then I promptly mm -hmm. forgot what it meant, so what the hell. Lucky you. I know, I know. I see some Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is in the chat hey, as well Java. as Jade Red. Well, oh. Hansel. We got Hansel. Hansel. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget the damn pencil joke you came up with on the dork table. Anyway, continue. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're a funny Hi, guy. Hi, Mike Sabrar or Woody. Woody, however you want to. Yeah. yeah. Got some poopster and some prints going on, and they poopster have a show prints. on Thursday evenings Thursday here on the RLM. Evening. Poopster and prints. Too Got many. some Rob Wikes oh, going yes. on. Hey, and Bubbler. I saw the other day he was going out to the hot springs, and oh. I'm like totally jealous, dude. Well, I you, love going you could always in hot springs. You could always invite yourself to stay over the, with him for a while. You know, I'm afraid just... I would hear banjos. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's been Come on. <laughs> okay. I also see Rome's is here. We ain't, Rome, I ain't Rome. doing the Roman thing again. <laughs> Vanna White is also here, the lovely letter turner of the RLM channel. Whoop, don't whoop. you know? 
Yeah. I know. And her other half, the weather dork, the guy that tells us what the weather's supposed to be doing, but <laughs> it's just like any other weatherman, right? About 20% of the time, and yet still gets paid. Weather must be delivered accurately sometimes. Just for Whether just for shits or and not, giggles. You be live it or not. For shits and giggles, shits and gil- giggles will be had. And You're welcome. All fun and games until know, someone uh, shits and giggles. Or rains on you. Or then giggles and, and shits. And you got your and top with- down, and you just watch your car, and you're down there, and you're in your chart chart, and then it rains. And then you'll find out that it's not rain. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wrong color. <laughs> Wow. The homeless car wash, huh? <laughs> Pretty much. Got some Phantom 2 in the chat as well. <laughs> that was horrible, Barry. Wow. Would you You're like welcome. it in yellow or brown? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. You from Hershey? Hershey. Okay. <laughs> Not the Hershey Highway. <laughs> <laughs> remember, ah, the old <laughs> remember when Sir found out what that was all about? <laughs> she, she, <laughs> she, she, she <laughs> Any, okay, I got American swine. already. <laughs> what? Hi, Chaskura and CC66. I'm she bottled. Hi, Soikle. Soikle, hello, honey. We also got a cyborgian noodliness. Cyborg. So you'll be touched by the cyborgian noodliness. Cyborg. Only on the interwebs can you be cyborg cyborgian noodliness. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of pervy. Uh, never mind. The lovely Miss Donna <laughs> Dam Van is here, Dan. as well as E Man yeah. and She Ra. Hi, Enziv. <laughs> How you doing, hon? Flash, somebody. Hello, Flash. me. He's the Flash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad it was a speedy Flash and not the other kind. <laughs> the smelly Flash. Well, you know, actually, uh, one of our, our county sheriff from umpteen right. zillion years ago, which he was the best county sheriff ever, because yeah. when he was out on patrol at night, you'd drive by his patrol car, and he's sitting in the front seat sleeping. Yeah, he's but cool. did his fart sparkle? I don't know, but my brother one year, um, <laughs> brother Mikey one year, for uh, Halloween when we were working at the grocery store, everybody dressed up, and Mikey dressed up as a flasher. He took... He took his sweatpants and he cut them off um, just below the knees, and then he taped them around his leg, and he had this big old trench coat on and a hat, and he was going around flashing people. Yeah. You know, and he had, uh, like, gym shorts or swim trunks or whatever. Oh, yeah, that's what I but tell everybody. The sheriff, and he said, you going to arrest me for indecent exposure? And the sheriff looked at him and said, in order for it to be indecent exposure, someone's got to be aroused. So we, I wow. thought that was going to be ah. That was freaking funny as put down. And, I mean, this was a little old guy, you know, like 70-ish. Or the technicalities it, of law. <laughs> I know. But it was just so funny to have him just, just deadpan as hell Ouch. say that. I about died. I was laughing so hard. Grumpy! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, did I go squirrel? Oh, yes. I <laughs> All the way to Memphis. <laughs> Gooberzilla. Goober hey, Goob. How you Zilla. doing? I also see a guest, 98127. 98127. Okay, so, hey, that adds up to 27. Uh-oh. Which, when you add those two, means nine. So, guest number nine. I'm into the numerology thing uh, right there. Hi, Papa, Papa, Pond Sauce. Uh, oh, also oh, got oh, some sauce. 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 You feel better now? S-J-F. Yeah, Slim Jim Flim. Film. Flim. Yeah. Flim. Yeah. Close enough. Yeah, that one. I Ma Taz. The smartest Taz, Taz in the West. Maniac we also Bob. got the holiest Roger ever. Yep. The holiest. As Bob. well as some Yup. Yup. Ah. Which way did he go? Which way did he go? And some Yup. 
picks to round out the crew. So there you go. I got I squirreled, oh. and I still got it done in nine minutes. No, we started at nine minutes ago, but you did it quicker than that. Holy. You know why? Holy. You know what the key to why? doing it quickly is? Me not interrupting you every name for two minutes. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> that does seem to help you get through them faster. Yeah. Anyway. Well, plus, if I get you laughing so hard you're wheezing, you know I can cruise through at oh, least three I've been, I've been a smoke on the marijuana. You made me Oh, the you've been making friends with Mary Jane, eh? Oh, wait, fuck. It should be all... You know, if there's going to be anything mandated, it should be you must smoke cannabis. Thou shalt... If you're going to bend a knee, it better be to pick up a paper or a lighter. None of that, you know, none of that pedophile priest shit. Come here, let me stick Thou shalt a cookie partake in your mouth. of the Mary Jane. Uh, you know, years ago I read a story or a book or something about the origins of celibacy in the uh, Italian-based church. I forget which particular church it was referring to. Because there's like four of them, but they're all the fucking same, right? Anyway. Well... Definitely Catholicism. Okay, but it's the one where the guys that do all the religiating, they uh, take a vow of abstinence with sex. Oh, oh. And there's a... monks. Yeah, but no, no, no. The preachers that preach the freaking religion crap to you in the seats. Yeah. The, are yeah. those monks too? Okay, all right. I got yeah. it confused. Anyway. Well, they're Catholic. Okay, but, yeah. but the reason behind the celibacy... Uh, law being written in the first place, right, was supposed to be so that the the religious leaders wouldn't leave an heir behind and lose the land to the heir of a you know child. Oh yeah, because now the choice one of their grubby paws on it. And I believe to this moment that, that was just a story to cover up. The reality is that to practice their religion in a social manner, you have to be a child poker. Not interested in in pursuing a, a you know male female relationship in your adult life. And an adult of the female persuasion. Yeah, so it seems to me that the proof shows me anyway that this is like a cult of guys that like to poke little kids, and the way they do it is they preach the word of the whatever up there. And in, yeah, in yeah, 2000, but that whole abstinence thing. I mean, it's a story. To hide if, the pedophilia. How can all yeah. these, how do you just accidentally find out that all these priests in this one religion all poke little kids? It's legal for them to get married, but they choose not to. Why? Because they don't, they don't want women. They want little kids. And there was enough, uh, there was enough have, of a settlement. more children if you don't go forth and procreate yeah. and create more children. Well, you know, that's for the poor people, Mary. Come on. See, it's not. Oh, that's yeah. for the the dirty breeders the, to do. Yeah, the filthy, the filthy. What do they call them? The filthy masses or something? You know, people that that have to live out there in poverty and support these fucking churches. They're the ones that do all the reproducing and the leaders up. No, they're all poking all their children. It's been going on and on and on. And all I can define this thing as is a fucking pedophile ring, with the excuse of well. Well, maybe that's so, but no, because the proof shows it's different. Why would a church well, put six hundred million dollars out in hush money? And that wasn't even hushed up; it was just you know, shut up. We're done. And that was a while true. ago. That was like nineteen years ago. And then now See, we've got all this pedophile crap in the government. Ah, it's fucking ridiculous. It's all church based. Church based. What do you think? Do you think I'm wrong? Well, you know, if it was really like a religious religiosity kind of thing, well, religiosity just pretty much explains it right there. But <laughs> if it was really for religious reasons, yeah. Yeah. they would become eunuchs. Exactly. Or some extreme that would make them different than what we've seen over history, right? Cause you know, it's kind of like the... Did you did you know I I read this I don't know one of those weird fact kind of things which God only knows all of this his story stuff that's out there you never know if it's true or not but 
apparently when the Vikings had raided England and they had gone to this convent nunnery where the rich people sent their unruly daughters to live in isolation and poverty the rest of their lives. In any case, uh, the Vikings came and were raiding this convent, and the nuns did not wish to be raped. They wanted to be able to go to the heavenly realm with their virtue intact. So what did they do? They cut their noses off so that the Vikings would think they were so hideous they wouldn't potty poe them. Oh, to cut your nose and, to spite your face, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so that's where the saying, cut your nose off to spite your face, uh, came from. And never. it must have worked because the Vikings, instead of doing any, doing the dirty deed with them, they just burned them up. Well, there's different. there's also different Vikings that went to different countries from different you know, from different countries. And the ones that ended up in Scotland were the island where I was at. Uh -huh. The artifacts that the society found were trading artifacts. There was no war relics. or uh, There was definitely uh, history that they'd been there. They, they called them the Glaswegians. So um, I think they were from Norway, whoever came to Orkney. And they, they did make well, you know, they had relationships and had offspring. They didn't rape and pillage and destroy. Oh, but see, that takes away from the narrative. You yeah. know, it's just like yeah. I read something the other day about how some pagan king had decided that he was going to be a Jew and make his whole tribe Jews yep. because the Jews got along with the Christians and the Muslims. And I thought, okay, you're making it sound like pagans are conniving rat bastards that you know get a, that do all of this shit so that they can manipulate both sides against the middle, or however. And I thought, there's an awful lot of pagan religions out there, or what is classified as paganism, mm. that are not violent, ugly, but that's what they do. They take one word and they start feeding it to you like it's bad, it's ugly, it's horrible. You know, just like um, anarchy is bad, it's ugly, it's horrible, it's chaotic, it's all this other. No, it's not. Look up the definition, you moron. Look Ooh. where it came from. And then see how they have perverted it over the years. And that's, that's why I say English language is a language for casting spells because mm -hmm. that's what they do. They yeah. take everything in the English yeah. language and they pervert it from the truth. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's why they call it dog Latin in the first place. No, I had not heard that it was called dog Latin. Thank you. Oh, I yeah, go back a little. Well, see, there's so many different sources of information. First off, right? Half uh -huh. the time, I don't know if I'm reading the truth or if I'm reading another bullshit story. That's how much shit I've read about all this crap, right? But what the yeah. uh, what I was reading said that in when language, when English was first in, in, introduced as a language... They had the royal language, and then they had the peasant language. And the peasant language is English. And they referred to it as dog Latin because you can make it however you want to. It's. Uh, I was talking to Cirque about this a couple of days ago. And I, you know, and, and I asked her, I said, is your language, can you just change definitions because it you know, fits it? And I asked her that because there's so many times I'll hear her using an English word in a modern, you know, mm -hmm. for, she'd be talking to somebody at work. And it's Danish, Danish, Danish. And then all of a sudden, I hear this English word that they don't have a, a word to translate into. So it got me to thinking about, well, that must mean that right down to the structure of your proper, your proper Danish language must have a, a, a rule, set of rules that you follow. And they're harder to break because there's less words to use. Ah, because my mother-in-law warned me. She says, you know, if you learn how to speak Danish and we don't want you to know what we're saying, we'll use slang. And if you figure that slang out, we'll change it and find something else. And I thought that was the most honest way to approach that instead of, you know, string me along and not telling me. They let me in right in the beginning. Know this. And that was kind of cool. I didn't yeah. take it as a threat. I took it more as a. Save yourself a lot of trouble, you know. 
Oh, hey, yep, mm-hmm. just said it. Yeah, the Kazarians. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. That. I interrupted you for that. No, that's fine, because I was pretty much, but yeah, he he answered. It was the Kazarians, the king of the Kazarians. There's always somebody in the chat that's more nerdy than us. That much we know, because <laughs> we, between the two of us, we're like a, on a scale of one to ten, me and you are about a five together on the uh, trivia game. Because of the speed yeah. and the typing, and then half the time I don't know anything either. <laughs> but there's other people that do, you know. And see, I have a tendency to know the most bizarre, weird shit. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Then everybody will go. Whoa. How do you know that? <laughs> don't. Know. I must have went to nerd class that day. <laughs> and that's where my Rolodex and my brain stopped. Uh, for the day. Uh, and if you ever hear me on the radio and you hear this uh, noise, that's uh, my Rolodex spinning. Well, <laughs> what Grimner did was he put up a link that says, uh, says that's what you need, a fucking marijuana czar. Cuomo hires Rhode Island official as marijuana czar. Now, first question I would have is, what the fuck is marijuana there you go that's another one of them their words that they use to uh to somewhat steer the public's opinion it worked yes it did i'm terrified of going to prison for owning too much marijuana because that's what the government don't like you know i really should kind of pay attention to what I say, because when I say I'm going out to pull weeds in the yard, I could go to jail for that. <laughs> have, you got, have you got a neighbor that doesn't like you that might turn you into law enforcement? Oh, my God. Do you remember Bewitched? Hmm? You know, with... Oh, yeah. With the original... Nose? Yeah, with the original Dick York. On t- or before, the guy before Dick York. What yeah. Did he? he was yeah. a dick something, too, well, but uh, the funny guy with the big ears, first... Yeah. Yeah, Derwin yeah. or whatever. The original Darren. Yeah. 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 Well, I tell you what, I have got Gladys Kravitz's reincarnated person living across the street from me. Do you across take, the street and up on the other corner. Do you take pictures? Oh my lord. I mean this this is little podunk to blinker. Do you, you know, take pictures and, for the internet? Oh, God, I don't know, but, man, she called me yesterday, and she wanted to know if we could go um, haul her daughter's car into town for her because there's a guy in town that said that he would fix her brakes if she got her car to him because she's got all the parts for it, but her brake lines are not attached, and so she didn't think it would be a smart idea to drive it into town nine miles Uh with curvy roads. Yeah. It's like, good, her, her. good plan. But she, you know, just out of the blue, just called me, and I'm like, how in the hell did she get my number? number <laughs> and then she's going, would you guys mind uh, taking my uh, daughter's car into town so she can get the fixed? Wow. Well, okay. I'm, yeah. But then, I mean, you, that's how she opened up the conversation. Sweet. And then a half an hour later, I have found out mm. everything I did not want to know about all of the property around me that's gone on in the last, like, <laughs> week or so. I did not realize this little two blinker where nothing ever happened. I didn't realize so much happened. Yeah. <laughs> this blinker. Wow. Obviously, she sees – I think she sits at her window and watches everything. With binoculars and a little notepad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really, uh, honest to God, don't. And it doesn't make a damn bit of difference what time of day or night. That woman's at that window, and mm-hmm. she's watching. Because she was telling me about something that happened at like 3.30 in the morning, and I'm going, wow. 3.30 in the morning? If I'm up at 3.30 in the morning, <laughs> I'm making a trip to the bathroom. Yeah, and maybe. And I'm hauling ass back to bed because it's freaking cold, and I want to get back under the warm covers. Oh, you're one of those. Yes, I oh, am. Oh, and tonight's episode of In a Perfect World is... Entitled, Legal My Ass. The real reason cannabis is available, again, is... <laughs> it's legal schmeagle. You know, just because something's legal doesn't make it right. No, but it's a neighbor like the one you just 
described that I live in, I, if, you know, at home, at this point in time, if I lived at home, home, America home, I would live in terror of that woman. <laughs> I do too. And yeah. I'm not even doing anything illegal, yeah. but yeah. I still live in terror because, because, you know, every time I step outside, it's like, oh my God, is she going to come over and want to talk? I better get wow. busy. And you know, getting busy out in the yard, you know, like really working and lifting heavy things and stuff, yeah. that doesn't stop her from coming over to talk. But not to help, you know, just to talk. <laughs> yeah, just to talk. She, she stays outside the fence so she doesn't have to come in and, you know, say, oh, and she will yell at you mm-hmm. just loud enough to where you can tell she's yelling something, but it sounds oh, like yeah. Charlie Brown adults. Wah, 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 wah. Come on, help me. <laughs> like that? Yeah. So it's, this is, I'm, I'm explaining to you my poi fish wild. <laughs> okay. I'm going to interrupt your perfect world for a, okay. a, a Grimner link break because he, he put something up about cannabis. And you know how I am about cannabis. Uh-huh. I'm not all 420 all the time, but I'm, I'm one. If you want to burn it, burn it. it you're, and I think the stories are exaggerated. Until you mix cannabis with some other thing, you're not, it, it's not what people tell you. So, but the good news is, according to this link, and it's called Cuomo Hires Rhode Island Official as Marijuana Czar. Doesn't that sound disgusting already? Just like, what the fuck is a marijuana czar? Wow. And yet, huh. you know, huh. when I hear the word czar, I picture one of those rushki hats. <laughs> yes. You know, with the we, fur we, and the Yeah, because we're all raised with the communist thing about the Russians. You know, they're yeah. trying to get us all that school shit about the the Russian communism crap versus the American wonderful capitalism crap. And you know what happened? It turned out everybody's living in socialism and they don't have to don't even know it. Shh be very, very quiet. We don't want people figuring that out. I'll tell you when Rob when Rob reminds Hansel that he's a card carrying socialist Hansel goes nuts. Anyway, to the story. To the bat uh-huh. cave. Oh. Anyway, this is from Grimm. I took it off the RealLibertyMedia.com chat page, and I put a copy in the notes for our epic show this evening. Albany. Among the 15 new hires announced Monday by Governor Andrew M., the M is for mutant, Cuomo, one stood out for stakeholders in the marijuana legalization battle person to head a new office of cannabis programs. Wow. Do you have a copy of this? Cannabis programs. Yeah. Cannabis pro- Is this like television that's so <laughs> I think so. Maybe they're going to have, you know, a TV show showing you how to roll properly. Oh, yeah. I could use that because I totally sucked at rolling. Well. I, I'm so glad I don't have to do that now. I learned from a... a an older guy when I was like I don't know, 12 or 13 and we practiced on cigarettes and he taught me, you make two piles, one in, uh, in of tobacco. And then you put mm-hmm. your finger in the center and center them between, you know, the out, outside of the middle. And so it looks like, uh, two piles in, instead of one. Right. And then you take your thumbs and you smooth this down. And after a while you just, you know, you can roll it, Cigarette in a couple of, you know, boom, 10 seconds and it's done. And they're straight and they're nice. And How do you do that? I listened to the guy that taught me how to do it. There you go. You know, I'm thinking I was probably a little on the sonored side yeah, when yeah, others were trying yeah, to teach me how to yeah. do that. And so my attention was not necessarily the, you know, it was mm. less than a goldfish. Well, look at the way I fuck up names. Or dates and such. I usually have the information right, but maybe I'll throw the wrong name, wrong first name, wrong last name, something like that. I'd like to blame that on the pie. But I think I do that when I'm not stoned. I don't I don't think I'm so fucking concerned about being correct all the time that I've got to say everything perfectly. If I fuck it up, I can fix it later. Oops, I made a mistake. Uh, I said something that meant this, but I said that. Yeah. It's a lost art. And people are 
just they're not forgiving and they're not understanding of each other. Very uh, totalitarian. You know, everybody wants what I want, what I want, don't you? Well, and there's an awful lot of people out there that get extremely butthurt when their name is mispronounced. Oh, no. And bless like her that. heart, my yeah. eldest daughter had a name that was not necessarily, you know, unless, unless I pronounce it for him, it didn't necessarily, I thought it sounded the way it was spelled because, mm-hmm. you know, Brie Cheese is B-R-I-E, but apparently a lot of people had issues with that. In any case... You know, she never really got upset about it. She just kind of got to the point where she just answered to whatever. But, you know, some people she would correct. Others, it's like, okay, she's going to be saying it wrong for the rest of my life. And she's (laughs) an old person. Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, so, but people nowadays, they tend to get really, really butthurt Hmm. over their name being mispronounced. And instead of just saying, okay, this is how you pronounce it, they go, You should know my name. You should know how to pronounce it. <laughs> oh, really? Well, just for that, I'm going to mispronounce it every <laughs> time I see you now. Oh, you're because mean. I'm such a loving person like that. Ooh. So you're one of those. Hmm. Yes, I am. I am very well, delightful. Well, for the moment, let's assume that the cannabis programs they speak of will be actually programs to... Uh, <laughs> Instruct people on how to use cannabis, like, you know, like we're idiots. Okay, let's let's assume that it's government. And go to the next paragraph. The hiring of Norman Byronbaum, who was a major force in pro-legalization efforts for the Rhode Island governor, is being taken by some officials as a sign. Cuomo will push, perhaps more forcefully, efforts to legalize the drug in the coming 2020 session. I cry out fucking let's see they're still playing off the negative of this cannabis shit. And you'll never hear an apology from these fucking lying politicians and boy, the medical fucking people. Ooh. It makes yeah. my tumor bleed, Miss Mary. I am telling you. I understand. I I have a really hard time seeing it as a drug. Yeah, me too. It, I mean, I it's a freaking plant. It may have or it does have components hmm. in it hmm. that ha- that do things like drugs do. But when you really stop and think about it, it's not even really drugs. It's got brain chemicals in it. I mean, you're qualified to think about it. Where do you- the people that listen to us know what we're talking about. And like yourself, a lot of people don't participate, but they don't judge the, from the stupid side of the coin. You know, how, how much knowledge needs to be exposed, you know, and everything's exposed. They don't learn shit. They, the truth was exposed. It's all bullshit. And I think the way they deliver all this crap comes to the, the majority of the population, and it's still negative. They still want this shit illegal. Yeah. Why? Because there's a drug war that doesn't work. I, I mean, all these failed things in, in you know society, year in, year out, country to country, and we still do the same stupid shit every fucking day like a bunch of idiots. Ah, I'm losing my patience with this world, let me tell you. Where's the meteor? <laughs> my kid, that's great. <laughs> well, I just I need to fix my etch a sketch, you know, and make it big enough I can shake that thing and mm-hmm. yeah. We'll just do a rewrite or a redraw or well, a whatever. The people it, all right, but the people that have the loudest voices in the electronic society that we participate in, they uh-huh. seem to do the least listening among us, if you know what I mean. It's one thing that to be right, and it's one thing to have an opinion, but you know there's a time where you you have to listen to the enemy and hear what the enemy's got to say, so you know why they're your enemy. <laughs> because whether you accept it or not, there there is an enemy out there in the business world and you know the physical world, and they do shit to us like climate change, <laughs> IRS crap like that, Federal Reserve Bank. 
And these things are so big that little schmoey average Joe doesn't even give a shit anymore about none of it. See, and I just, I see that shit and I just, I am to the point now, I don't feel sorry for these people because sorry, you know, or feeling compassion for them. I, I, I have a hard time having compassion for some individuals like that, but I do pity them. You know, kind of like a Mr. Uppity? P. I pity yeah. the fool. Yeah, kind it's of kind of thing. uppity, though. It's true. I don't. I'm not arguing about it so much. It's like it's just like the last. That's the last place I want to go with another human. Uh, you know, carbon-based life form. But some yeah. people don't seem to know they've got a uh, an opt out. Even if it's only in fucking words and mental, it's still an opt out. You don't have to live the dream. But knowing the dream is there is a big advantage. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mm, there's a lot of people that I just go, damn, <laughs> damn. But and a lot of them, you know, they've got to have some kind of smarts to them, but they are so freaking attached to whatever warped mindset they've got going on that mm. it's like, okay, honey. Well, what would you consider you I, warped? We just ain't gonna... Give me an example of what you call warped. Oh, these people that, you know, they the, the medical system does nothing but good oh, for people. Oh, okay, absolutely. You know, those kind of mindsets where my doctor would never do anything to hurt me. Mm. My doctor is, but yeah. you should, why mm. don't you do that? But the law says you should do that because the doctors <laughs> say that it's really. <laughs> no. Hey. They have a white coat. That's their special little uniform that they wear. Yeah, but it was only what eight years ago that I didn't know any damn better either. I didn't preach anything, but I had that you know that trust these people thing indoctrination going on. And all the all the people that were around me where I lived were either military or you know paramedics or cops or something in in that world that I associated with. So. Hmm. And see, I think uh, I may have had just enough of a sprinkling of the old country doctors that I'd been around. Yeah. And that you know, well, the one that delivered my two daughters, hmm. that you know, it was, man, don't. Don't be bringing your kids in here. They don't need here. Try this. <laughs> oh, instead. wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, those kind of doctors, the ones that actually were concerned about your health, they actually cared about people's health, as opposed to the ones, well, you have a sniffle. Bring your child in immediately. We must inoculate the whole family. <laughs> yeah. Going back to your thir three generations. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it just, it makes me nuts, some of this. And a lot of this, you know, I'm reminded of a lot of this stuff simply because I've been going to the doctor with my mom again. And, oh, uh, uh. oh, I know, I know. I believe me, I, I've been staying in the back waiting because this thing is still ongoing. I can tell by the behavior. But when it, when it explodes, it's going to explode good. Oh, yeah. I know, I know, you know, I, I could tell by the way you were talking before the show. Something's cooking. Oh, no. But, you know, each family, if you have one, I used to have one. Now I've got another one, but it's not, it's, I'm not as close with Cirque's family as it was with my own, obviously. And uh, most of them were victims of the uh, medical in the long run. The medical did them no good. No good. But, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. But you couldn't, you couldn't tell my mother that. My father, he, I think he got it long, long, you know, because he let it go. But my mom fought it to, I guess, how many years after he went? You know, a few years. But the statistics were still against her in the first place. They say that couples that were married for that kind of amount of time, they usually don't. Uh, the one that goes first will be followed shortly by the second. And yeah. Yeah. It took her a few years, but she didn't, you know. Anyway. So I, uh, how do you, that's life. Hey, so I'll see you up there. Uh, but that's just life. You know, it wasn't nothing like, uh, 
a murder or something tragic accident. It was just her gone. But the yeah, and that's, the that's kind of what we're dealing yeah. with right now. And this the yeah. system did the same thing. They play these they play these games with members of the family that uh, are on a different level of understanding than say me and you. And they work them against us. And they always oh, yeah. get the patient to side with them because they're going to live longer. Wow. You know, if I told Cirque, if I ever get that ill, I'm going to do myself then. I ain't going to fucking drag that shit out. What for? So you could change my diaper and, you know, hang a coat on my pecker every now and again? I don't think so. Of course, I'm not that yeah. old yet, but, you know, she's got plans to keep me around for a while. And with longevity comes decay. It's inevitable. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because anything in the physical world decays. I grew up on fluoride in freaking McDonald's. Come on. I, my body is like, a, a, it's got to be like some kind of wasteland at some point. Well, it's the science experiment that we're just waiting to see. <laughs> yeah. How it turns yeah. out. Because I I still remember the flu shot that I got. I had to get it at the, um, what is it, Walgreens or something. This is how bizarre the whole fucking thing was. Couldn't get my passport and travel unless it, it was all at that point. You get this thing to go to the next step. And I'm yeah. like, fucking bad. you got to be kidding me. Well, I got the shot, but I never got the flu. So, to this day, I've always wondered if this girl wasn't just hustling and just injecting water. Because you're supposed to get sick. That's the whole Some point of a shot. Some people do not develop sy symptoms. I Some must people be, do not. Well, I don't know. This is eight years ago now, or whatever it's been. Yeah. But, you know, they used to talk about delayed reactions and all kinds of crap. They have the ability to put in these shots. And mm -hmm. I may, well, just as well as that. Then there's also con men that are milking the system, and they're not doing what they're telling you they're doing. And maybe with my luck, I hit one of those hustlers. Oh, there you go. Because hey, there's the bright side to everything. You know, I got one woman dumps me, and another one doesn't have a friend <laughs> at the time. <laughs> so, well, you know what I mean. Yeah. If one door closes, and another another window somewhere else opens up. Yeah, go look for it. There you go. Yep. I call that life. Other people call it crazy. Yeah, but it is life, and it all, and it all depends on how you look at it. You know, True. like with yeah. my mom's stuff, because yeah. the more I've been talking with siblings and yeah. things, and she's she is facing her mortality is what she is doing, because apparently whatever it is that she's got, they don't know if it's malignant or or <sighs> benign. Right. But they don't want to do the testing because oh. the testing is very invasive and oh. she's 88 years old and yada, yada, yada. And so finally, and from my brother who was there with mom when they went to the specialist, he said the doctor just looked at her and said, now we could do, and he listed out all these different things, but he said, one of them is the most invasive and this is the one that you will definitely not be able to live by yourself ever again. Wow. And, that's and big thing, we though. could do this one and we could find out, yeah. you know, wow. if it is benign or if it is malignant. And then we could kind of go from there yeah. or. Well, is we CBD oil, is CBD legal where you're at or do you got to deal with that shit still? Uh, no. C um, well, CBD is legal, but cannabis is not. Okay, well, CBD. But hemp is. But see, I've already I've already mixed her up some oils with mm. CBD oil in it. Okay. And I've got her using it for her arthritis on her hip. Uh -huh. uh, so she uses it daily already. <clears throat> yeah, Saturday, I was talking about these two younger kids I met down in town a couple months back. And uh, the one of them is a bass player. And his father is a bass player. He's, he says his father's a few years older than me. Mm -hmm. But he's ill, and he doesn't approve of Magnus smoking hash, but he takes CBD oil for his illness. So he's starting to relax on that status mind of, this stuff's bad, it's against the law kind of shit that you get pounded with for your life. You're going to believe it. And CBD is a component in the same plant. 
just True. like THC is a component in the same plant, and your brain has receptors for both of them. Some people are still indoctrinated to despise the cannabis smoker as a evil, you know, bad, wrong, yeah. mad, bad, bad. Oh, so you, you can't you help druggy. it. Yeah, but you can't help what you believe, you know, and sometimes... No matter how they try to change your mind when you're our age, it ain't going to change. We know what we know. And you can't, you can't blame anything. It's kind of, you're in the middle. You just kind of let it go. But it's funny to hear how him, you know, he'll talk about his father at least easing up. You know, he's not for it yet, but he's starting to show signs of letting go of the anger and his dislike for the, the hash. And the stigma. Because, yeah, because he's saying, oh, and then there's something to this. But explaining it to people that it's not a drug doesn't always translate very well because of the written definition in the modern day, how they just define yeah. what a drug is. Most of that's legal shit anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you define a, a thing in a legal sense... It sounds differently than if you just described it. And they, the state has really got a lot of practice in how to, you know, oppress us with our own words. <laughs> and you know what's really crazy? Hmm. It's, hmm. it's not necessarily the state, because the state is just this imagina imaginatory or imaginative thing that we're all kind of sort of agreeing with, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. hey, yeah, it does exist, just yeah. like government. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does exist. In your mind. But it's the people in there. Yeah. And, and the people in there, in order to partake or mm -hmm. participate mm -hmm. in such nonsense, they have to actually be live it. <laughs> they have yeah. swallowed that fool aid mm -hmm. all the way down. Mm -hmm. And you know, so change their diet. Maybe they'll change their mindset. And I'm not just talking dietary as in what you eat. I'm talking brain food diet. But, you know, people have got to do that all on their own. I mean, true. yes, Rob works. It is a mass delusion. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you give people options and you quit telling them this is what you must be live, this is how things are. Well, and you just tell it's, them, okay, here's the information. Make of it what you will. But, Mary, it's not so much illegal only counts. These people have armed enforcement to and carry out. And those people as well have been indoctrinated. And I wonder why it has doc in the middle of that, like doctor. I mean, a good number of them smoke pot at home in the first place. They're hypocrites. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They are law enforcement exactly. individuals yeah. while they're wearing the uniform. Yeah. Have you ever given that any real thought about what kind of mind it takes to get up in the morning and go out looking for people to fuck over? Cause I don't know any other way to look at it. What, what are they doing? I've seen the, the most horrible thing. This woman in Florida got arrested for having speed, and it turned out after they tested it to be cotton candy. But what would what would it take for a grown man to look at a, a sixty year old woman and then because something looks like something put her in jail? I'm wow. Yeah. It's a combination of fluoride, heavy metal poisoning, and I'm not talking the music. And uh, <laughs> yeah, aluminum, barium. But uh, so you I mean, you you don't see that as get a good indoctrinated. Thing. True. True. I've been indoctrinated to something. I just don't know what to call it. Well, and I, there's an, when people realize just mm -hmm. once that they've been lied to and they actually, instead of putting their head in the sand, not mm -hmm. like an ostrich, because ostriches do not do that. <laughs> but, you know, they put their head in the sand or put it up their ass, whichever that they're limber enough to pull off. And, you know, They've been lied to, and they see that lie. It smacked them right in the face, gave them a bloody nose to start with, and they're sitting there going, oh, I'm sorry I bled on you. I won't do that again. <laughs> yeah. I'll just look the other way and go back to my la, 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 la. Wow. I don't understand that concept. I know people that you know I have talked with and shown them evidence, and we've had really 
cool, awesome conversations where they even initiated the conversation. And then they turn around and they do exactly what they were just talking about, how bad it was. And I think, methinks your words do not match your actions. What the hell? Isn't that kind of common, though, now? That is very common, but I, I'm to the point where I just don't get that anymore. And I I do have to admit, 10 years ago, I was one of those people that, you know, I went and voted, and I cheered on the troops, and I did all this, and mm-hmm. I, I thought, yeah. But there was a little voice in the back of my mind that kept going, you fucked up. Well, You're messed up. Do you ever feel you probably well, have to check this shit out again? Mary, Did someone just lie to you? Do you ever feel like you've left the people that you're trying to reach the hardest behind? Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's there's quite a few people that I used to hang with, be yeah. good buds with. That I I just I can't I can't be around them anymore because the vibe is wrong. Wow. It's just very uncomfortable to be around them. How do you cope with that? Do you just hello and then try to find shit to go run off to do, or uh, pretty much, yeah. Because no. yeah, me, it's, uh, the way I do how it, you doing and keep moving. I've just got like hmm, a tolerance to uh, certain kinds of input, and me and Vinny went through it Saturday, and, and I don't know why I'm like this, but I just go, no, can't do that no more. Refuse, nope. Beat me, stomp me, do whatever you're going to do, but I'm not doing that. And I came to that point again. So I went, hmm. Oh boy, here we are. So, you know, yeah. and now me and, me and Vince are having a disagreement again over it, but uh, the only way I can comfortably exist in life is to be comfortable, you know? I can't force myself to do things that I don't really want to do for the greater good or as a favor to somebody else, if I'm not getting whatever I want out of it, you know, it's got to be a give and take. I don't just feel, I don't feel I just take shit and don't replace it. And that's where I, I got to. I went, I'm not enjoying this anymore. Let's stop it. Second time. Yeah. The first time, yeah. you know, I, okay. I, I was responsible for this second time. I'm not responsible. I'm reacting to, uh, how I feel. And if people call that butt hurt and sensitive, okay, call it what you like, but this is a, a this is something that Vinny harped on. This is a liberty based site. So I should not be expected to do something I don't really want to do. Yeah. Or and bullied see, into it. That's where you just you know, you have drawn a boundary and now you have gotten to the point where that boundary is is really kind of letting you know it's there yeah. and it's it's now uncomfortable. It's like yeah. you see an electric fence and you know it's an electric fence. You know it's going to zap your ass if you get too close to it or if you touch it. Well, I don't but, like fighting with people though, Mary. I mean, me and you disagree over the years about every freaking thing we talked about. But it uh, never got uh, personal at any level in my opinion, right? And, oh, no. Well, I just... Something about Vinny knows how to talk to me in a way where it just didn't work. He for knows me. where yeah. your buttons oh, are. Oh, huge! And and I don't know if he was being doing it on purpose or not, but that's beside the point. Because his his side of it, well, I didn't. I I don't care what you mean anymore. I'm beyond what you mean. So I wanted to take a minute at least explain myself to some point. But this has got everything to do with me and not nothing to do with Vinny. Really? It's just Yeah, many... well, it's basically your boundaries, and you've gotten to the point where it's uncomfortable for you. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't want understandable. to. I don't want to stop doing the radio, but I don't want to just be a punching bag for a group of people that won't get on the radio through Vinny. <laughs> on top of it all, I mean, there's just layers and layers of all kinds of stupid little high school fucking games I don't want to play. Yeah. But now let me finish. Uh, let me finish up a little bit more of this thing. I like the interruptions into the link that we're reading and, and the bantering. Not the you're telling me about your mother, and I'm going to interrupt in the middle to read the chat. Okay, I gotta so, I gotta hmm. do this one thing though. Go I'm ahead. No, Grimmy no. shared a Grimmy yeah. shared a a uh, link from Minds about WD40. 
Yeah. There, Leslie Nelson. There is a mechanic shop in town that still has that sign hanging up on the wall. Uh, oh, you mean the, <laughs> the spray WD-40? Yeah. Oh, I was For thinking For a of rusty this. tool? Yeah, I was thinking of the spy WD-40 from uh, Spy Hard. No. Hmm. Yeah. Nope, for the for the actual spray wow. WD forty wow. stuff. Yeah, there's a there's a mechanic shop in town that still has that on their wall. Wow, and and Weird Al even did a song about it and everything. I was so impressed. Did you know that me and Weird Al were born in the same hospital a year apart? I did not know that. Yep, he's either a year younger or a year older. I forget. I think he's a year younger. He was born there when my brother was born there that year, sixty. And I was ah. born just a few months before the, the at the end of fifty nine. So anyway, back to finish up a little bit more of this and then we'll get back to our rhetoric. Yeah? Okay. okay. Uh back to our story. The appointment <laughs> of Byron Baum was made public Monday in a release from Cuomo's office, announcing other recent senior level administration hires. Well, he said. And it just set them all on fire. It's oh, never mind. Cuomo last year proposed to create a separate office to run all things related to marijuana legalization, including setting the price of the drug and who gets to grow and sell it. Talks fizzled, however, and the effort died when not enough support could be found among Democrats who now control the state Senate. Uh, not enough among Democrats, a bunch of Fucking hypocrites. Wow. You ever not smoke with a with a Democrat? <laughs> Never mind. That was a bad joke. Uh, anyway. One more paragraph. While okay. people opposed to and supportive of marijuana legalization already know the issue will come before lawmakers in some form in 2020. It had been believed that next year, an election year for all state lawmakers, could be an even more politically dubious time to get the controversial drug legalization through the legislature. What that means to me is the bribes, the, the ink on the fucking paper hasn't dried for the bribes yet. It's all that crap, man. Bunch of lion thieves. Well, they're trying to figure out how many different ways from Sunday they can get their fingers in that pie. Yeah, they went from punishing the uh, having it complete at all to how much you can have it all. Uh, where's the difference that you and who can grow it but, and yeah. what you can do with it? I mean, cry now. You're still going to be a victim of the freaking law no matter. So whether it's legal or illegal, it's just the same crap. That's what I. Think. What do you think, Miss Mary? I'm trying not to. Oh. Okay. Well, <laughs> now all this legal shit. She decided is, to be it. a smoker after all, everybody. I finally mm -hmm. turned her. <laughs> well, Rob just went out for a smoke too, so. Oh, I I meant the other kind of smoke. Yeah. Well. But yeah, Rob seems pretty happy in the new his new place with the the new life going on. Yeah, and a yeah, hot spring. He, and he's yeah, he's got all kinds of new hobbies. And yeah, he, here it is, the winter time, and we're all freezing our nipples off, and old Rob Works is going out to the pool. Yeah. Oh. No shit, huh? But jealous? Nah, I, I'm not so much jealous. I, I'm really kind of glad he got something going, because before that, his last place wasn't so um, pleasing. He wasn't happy there. Yeah. And the Wi-Fi was... Not so good. Yeah, so he got off his ass and he went out and he did something about it. And there you go. You yeah. That's all you can fucking do in life is give it a try. And sometimes shit don't work. So what do you do when something doesn't work? I either abandon it or I try harder. Depends on the situation. You know? But either way, you got to take a step back and reassess it. Not always. Sometimes you just got to take a stand. I, I'm talking for me, not you. My assessing days are over. I don't have time to drag around and think things through. I either want to do it or I don't. And that's where I've, I would call it evolved. Because I used to eh, give things a consideration. And now I'm finding out in my older years that now I make up my mind and then 
I might bend a little bit, but no, my mind was made up a long time ago, and I was trying to please other people and did work. Yeah. Because my wife is a big, uh, she's big on, you know, making everybody comfortable. Okay. And, but I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm the big cheese around here. So, you know, ultimately, if I'm not comfortable doing something, she's not going to pester me to keep doing it. If at some point I crack and go, I don't want to do that anymore. But she's, you know, she's with me enough to go, okay, I understand. And not, not continue to try to make me work it out. Yeah. But, you know, in my life, I needed that calmer thinking person to, you know, slow down a little bit because I'm very impulsive and I like to do what I want when I want to fucking do it. Not wait for them to legalize the fucking weed. I'm going to go get some and I'm going to smoke it today. See how you are. I know. And you know what? There's a black market out there. Yeah. I could buy anything you can imagine on the black market, and I could get a better deal on the black market than you can get through a friend. You know, it's just the way of the world. It's the way the world works. It's a world within a world. Mm -hmm. And there are times when I just wonder if maybe it's not set up so that they can make a profit off both ends of the Oh, absolutely, because we deal in cash, see? Some of us don't, but, you know, in, in my history, I, there was lo- loads of times where I would trade a service or a commodity for another commodity or another service. And there was low times where you had to take the money. And then when you get money, what do you fucking do with cash? Mm. Hello? What when do you, you got do? money, what do you do with what cash? Do you do? When you have cash, what do you do with cash? You cannot pay bills with cash. But sure you, you can. No, you can't. Out here? I yet. could not pay an electric bill in L.A. With, or the Valley with the cash. I had to, it had to go through some kind of a, a third party. You either had to write a check or a money order or something, but they wouldn't take the cash. Now, where my mom is at, it is like that now. It has been for like the last few years. But out here, mm-hmm. I could go in and pay any bill I've got out here with cash. And there are some places that require you. To pay with cash. Have you seen that um, Bank of America link? It's about a 30 second link of a Bank of America. Guy goes in to pay his mortgage in cash, they wouldn't accept it. And if you didn't know that, and now you do, do you know why they wouldn't take cash to pay a mortgage? Because you're paying debt with debt. No. It's, it, <laughs> it's, it's actually, it's got some technicality to do with the accounting of it. Because the uh, the mortgage is in credits, and the, the currency is not in that accounting system that they were using. So cash wasn't accepted. And it says, you know, all debts public and private, except this one. Yeah. Well, I don't think it says that anymore. It used to. It used to say for all debts public or private, and then the, they dumped the gold standard, you know, the fake gold standard that we had. It wasn't real. Because there wasn't any gold even when Nixon was in power. Gold's been, the gold was gone 35 years before that. But the public doesn't know. You know yeah. it, took, it took them all a few, what, 30 years to steal it. And then another 30 years to lie about it. And then now people are just so electronic and everything. They're on, they're using Bitcoin and they're using this and that other and they don't stop to fucking think for one minute that this entire thing could collapse tomorrow. All of it. Then what do you do? Then you're you're dependent on your neighbors. So if, uh-huh. if you're living in a big city, oy, the trap's been set. All the sides are taken. The violence is everywhere. The shitty living is everywhere. Everything's poisoned, overcrowded. That's probably going to be the end game. And it looks like they're doing it. They're starting in Virginia, of all places, where the whole thing started, I think, in the first place, for the most part. You know, with the red flag laws, I guess I didn't go into that in detail. I just was thinking half of it. But, ah. yeah, Sim, this whole last couple of days on the Internet, was the uh, governor of uh, Virginia has threatened to uh, use the military to take guns by force if necessary. So now Good the, luck with that, dude. It, it, the, the, 
the powers that be want a civil war in the states. Oh yeah, they do. Okay, well, yeah. people that live there know it, and people that live abroad know it too. It's like everybody knows this, and yet some idiot somewhere is going to make it happen. Yeah. I don't know. It's always some off-the-wall thing. They usually get us into wars with a lie. Now, this time... Well, and I'm thinking the trigger on this one, hmm. no pun intended, hmm. but I'm thinking the trigger on this one is going to be a paid shill. Well, isn't it always... Not necessarily. There are there are there are idiots out there. Name one. <laughs> that is crap. So, okay. Up on the corner. Well, when um, you said that, I went right to my first fucking name. Always Oswald. Oswald never shot anybody. No. So no, the government knows how to work a patsy. They know how to play the shield. You know that uh, three card money thing. That till uh, what do you call it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And we 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 tolerate it. I tolerate it. You tolerate it. Everybody fucking tolerates it. You can't change it. You can't get ten people in a room together at the same time that can see the benefit of not having it. So we're stuck. And now we got marijuana czars in New York so they can make marijuana legal in 20 fucking 20. I mean, what is this going to take? 80 years of lies to comes to, well, we need to vote on it. What are you voting on? The dangers of marijuana. But marijuana is a bullshit word you made up to disguise cannabis. So. Yeah. There's so much bullshit out there, Mary, that's still out there. They're still teaching that. So a percentage of people are getting the truth, and the rest of them are getting the old story and believing it. It's the believing it that, that gets people in trouble. You know, everybody gets the same damn story. It's just people are not everyone believes the bullshit scam. <gasps> and, Duh. you know, there are, there are getting to be more and more people. That don't necessarily, they they still, they're still partaking a part of the propaganda trough, but they, yeah. you know they're starting to get a little bit more selective yeah. about what propaganda they'll swallow and what they won't. Hmm. And I don't know. I maybe that's why there's such a push for all of this bullshit because they know there are people, and it's going to get to a tipping point where where people are going to start going. Wait a minute here. Hmm. You are not my boss, Applesauce. It's supposed to be the other way around. Oh, so yeah. Let's, they lost Let's try this shit again. Yeah, they lost that that's, time. Because that is starting to happen, especially with these states that are pushing for mandatory vaccines with no exemptions. Hmm. I tell you what, you hmm. hit people in the kids, and, and they're starting to get some real pushback on the, some of this shit. Well, and it, I think... I think it's where you get people. Oh. You know, where, what trigger do you hit? Huh. What button do you push that pushes people over the edge and they say, okay, no more. I am done. Well, they've I got a group for everybody. I mean, if you're a club-footed lesbian with a list that plays the piccolo on Thursday, there's a fucking group for you. Yeah, that is true. Well, that, that illusion right there is what's creating... You know, this mess to keep continuing to grow. Everybody it ha wants their group. It's backfiring, though. It How? is backfiring. There okay. are so many people that are sick of the freaking, huh. we are special. We're the club-footed lesbians of America, and we mm. want to unite. And by God, you should make exceptions for us yeah, because yeah, we're yeah. more equal than you. Yeah. There uh, is pushback going on. People are getting yeah. sick of that shit. Yeah. Well, I'm all for live and let live. You know, if you want to go home and rape a cat, that's not my problem. My problem is when you want to discuss it with me and show me pictures. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. But see, people think that if, if you don't give them the uh, attention to their personal little sickness, that you're oppressing them. They have a right to shove their fucking crotch in your face. And if you don't lick it, they're going to put you in jail for not licking yeah. it right. And, and 
Wow. People are getting tired of that shit, and they're starting to push back. You don't see a whole hell of a lot of it on the news because they don't want anybody else knowing that you can push back against this shit. Yeah. Oh, okay. I I agree with that. Sure. Well, and then again, I live in this little poda place where there's very small population and a lot of old people. So the people that live here are, you know, they seem to be like, you know, more concerned about taking care of shit, you know, each other and whatnot. I was yeah. asking, I was asking the, the guys the other day, you know, if, uh, if we got cut off from the city, how long would it take the locals to get the electricity back up? Not long. Not, oh, that we wouldn't do that. Oh, just right off the boom, first thing, not, not very long. We'd have up and running. Because this is a small community. These kids, have, you know, li one's lived here his whole life. The other one's from the next town away. So, that you know, they, they know. And they're so against the status quo of life because they think like I do. What's wrong with people that they can't see how simple this is if you listen? Yeah, and see, you see that there, and I see that here, and I, and to me, starting to see that means that it's not just going on here; it's going on other places. Oh yeah, as well. yeah. But like I've been saying since I moved here, the difference is rope compared to barbed wire. You have the illusion of freedom here; it's much more, uh, it's much more physical. It's not so much just a, a thing you chant in your head. While you you know go to bed to get up to go to work the next day, I mean crying out loud, Cirque has to go to work tomorrow, and she's looking forward to it because they got some kind of I don't know Christmassy hunt thing they do and on this crap that that I wouldn't appreciate, and she knows that, so she gives me the hey you stay here if you want to I'm I want to go so I go go have fun. And instead of her job being a drudging fucking chore and all that kind of crap, it's more like a uh, like her boyfriend. I compete with this job for her, you know, little attention sometimes, and because it's it pleases her to work there. It's like I've never been involved with anybody that liked their job this much. Well, and that's good. Oh yeah, I'm not complaining about <laughs> it. I'm just saying. That yeah. in, in my adult life, most people that I knew at some level despised what they did for work, but needed the job. And that's not her behavior about it. It's way different. So, as long as she's happy doing that, if she ever comes home and says, hey, I don't want to do this anymore, maybe we'll go to America. Huh? 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 I'll be a cannabis crop grower, baby. You know what I mean? Huh? There you go. Deal with the Fed. Sell them some cannabis. What do you think? Would you buy cannabis from me? <laughs> mm, I don't How know, much can I put you, you down for? I got I got thousand pounds. How much can you use? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> let me let me try to read a little bit more of the Crimp's link. We really butchered it. Thanks for uh cheering me up tonight. You're welcome. Well I <laughs> Apparently, I've got a very sensitive side, Miss Mary, and I can only take so many, you know, one-liners at, at me personally that then I get bored and go, I don't want to play no more. Meanwhile, back at the story. Wow. And meanwhile, back in the RLM chat real quick. Hey there, Cowboy Tech. Hey, CT. Ah, we're live, in case he doesn't know. Anyway, while people opposed to and supportive of legalization already know the issue will come before lawmakers i think i read that already did i yeah I think I did. yeah you already read that richard azo party a senior advisor to cuomo noted that the state already has an industrial hemp program and the governor recently signed legislation that will regulate all forms of hemp and hemp extracts, such as the exploding CBD marketplace. But the hiring of Byron Baum, who will work out of Cuomo's executive chamber, under the desk, third one to the left, 
also shows the marijuana legislation issue will get beyond the front burner in Albany, New York, next year. Byron Baum oversaw industrial hemp and medical marijuana programs in Rhode Island and worked for the state's governor on recreational legalization efforts. Whoa, he's a cool dude. You want to party with him? No. Hey, I got a question for you. Live on the radio with no warning. How's married life treating you? It's treating me pretty darn good. How's Wayne? He is just doing awesome. Excellent, excellent. He, we just got back from babysitting the grandkids, and mm. he's just so excited that his daughter, you know, trusted us enough to babysit. And I started laughing, and he said, you know, they wouldn't have called if it was just me. They called because you were here. Ah. Of course, you know, I'm down there, mm. and I got my baby fix. Mm. Oh, man. And that, their littlest one, she's <laughs> she was born the beginning of June, I think. Yeah. And, uh, oh, my goodness, I walk into the room, and she smiles, and she wants me to hold her mm-hmm. because she knows I will play, and we will walk mm-hmm. around the house, and we'll do the bouncy thing and, you know, whatever. So, Yeah. His daughter is really tickled because now she doesn't have to because she's go- also going through that. She's cutting teeth on the bottom. Hey, Jay's nines and, and Jay's just popped into the chat room. Sweet. You better so go flirt. Married lady, go flirt. Go flirt and let them know you're on the radio. Hey, JJ. Not in my headphones, on the type. The <laughs> RLM. Crazy. Though. Anyway, no, because uh, I, I, kn- I know you a little bit more than just, you know, little chat on the radio we mean you're a little closer than that so so mm-hmm. i but i was always very uh secretive about wayne uh-huh and i i got along fine with him ever since i met him but the two of you getting hitched joining the straw man and you know getting rid of one problem in in the long run mm-hmm. well not everybody see some people they uh they weigh the, the marriage out in dollars first and not emotion first. And, and sometimes you just got to take a chance. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's so funny. Everybody has asked us, so what'd you do after you got married? Mm. Well, he went to Hall Bales and yeah. came back home and got some stuff ready because we were going out of town that weekend. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and they're like, he went what? to work. He, <laughs> he likes hauling bales. And it's it's yeah. just so funny because, I mean, and we went down to see my youngest daughter, and, which is about a three-hour drive. And I swear to God, every time we went by a field that had bales in it, I was driving and he would go, you see that? Bales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's just kind of, you know, yeah. he calls me squirrel because uh, I'll be wandering around. Next thing you know, I'm off doing that male is completely different from what I set out to do. Oh. And so I'm squirrel and he's bales. Oh, yeah. so. <laughs> wow. Bullwinkle and Rocky would be jealous. Yes, they would. Yes, they would. But we have fun with it. We really do. When, so. when I was living in Miami back in the 90s, <clears throat> I used to hang out with uh, people that were in the uh, commodities business before I got there, years before I got there. And they were making jokes in the 90s about save the bales because when the Coast Guard would chase boats, the guys would dump the bales off the boat. In case they got caught, they wouldn't have anything Ooh. on the boat in possession. Aha. And, but the bales would get lost in, in, in the ocean somewhere, wherever they were running from. And so, then the fish would get stoned. Well, no. Other, other people, <laughs> see, there were people watching people. So other people would go out and try to, while the cops were chasing one group, they'd, the other group would go out and try to rescue the shit that they dumped. Aha! Uh-huh. Save the bales. Oh, man. And, you know, the cops couldn't catch a cold, by the way. Yeah. Most people that end up in trouble, in any real serious quantity troubles for any kind of illicit uh, materials the government doesn't want you to have, uh-huh. snitches and Sometimes the cops just pull the right fool over at the wrong time, and they get lucky. But yeah. law law enforcement couldn't catch a fucking cold. Oh, 
<laughs> With that hey, goodness, we got a Melanie here. Hi, Melanie. Are there are there people enjoying the RealLibertyMedia.com chat? Oh my God! I believe so. Oh, that is very special. All right, should I? <laughs> that voice has got me laughing. I don't know if I can. Maybe you should try to read it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that voice is is oh, just. A, okay. I find that voice as amusing yeah. as you find my Munchkin voice. So. <laughs> okay, I will go back to the story, folks. <laughs> But if you don't understand it, it's because the voice is really strange. All right, let me try this again. Okay, Miss Mary. Brian Bob oversaw industrial hemp and medical marijuana programs in Rhode Island (laughs) and worked with state governor on recreational legalization efforts. The governor has been very clear that we lose an adult in his agenda. It is a priority for next year and will be part of the agenda. As all parties said, the salary for burn bombs is not immediately available. Lawmakers who have been used to their run after his sense of self and employment. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that cracks me up. It was hard to do that last. national news should anyway, be delivered. Because it's so Nobody stupid. Nobody will take those stupid shit serious. The governor. Okay, back to normal book. The okay. governor announcing <laughs> the hurt. <laughs> hiring of added staff to help move New York State forward toward a full legalization model is a clear signal the legislature will have a partner in this issue in 2020. Hey, that was fun. <laughs> I'm sorry, Grim. I just went tilt. But, uh, well, it was. I just enjoyed goofy voices. What can I tell you? I missed the dork table for that, you know, when we were just climbing around. Then you got all Farmer Brown on us. And, <laughs> uh, and your Saturday was your Monday, and your Friday was your Tuesday, and all that shit got all of it. But the good thing came out of it is you and Wayne got together. So, mm-hmm. well, I don't like a lot of people, Miss Mary, and you know, you know how it can be. I'm very disagreeable. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, he is a sweetie. Oh, yeah. Well, you know how what a nose kiss, you know, ass kisser and brown noser I am too. I like people to like me at all cost. Mm-hmm. I know, and that's so unusual for you, Joey bastard. You please. I don't. I don't know. I. I have such a strange outlook on on human life. You know, carbon based life forms. That I really like the time where I'm alone. You know, I have spent a lot of years amongst my fellow carbons, and for the most part, it was amusing, but hmm, I can do this act alone. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> well, not without a partner so much, but uh, I don't know. It is, sometimes it is fun to have a playmate. Oh, yeah, definitely. Especially, I like radio with somebody that's fun. That, that, I don't have much, you know, that I want. But, well, maybe that is asking for a lot. Who knows? But I can do that goofy voice. we got to give that voice a name. I don't know, because it's really not Truman Capote either. But How about it's... Carl? Carl is like just one of those. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if Carl That's had a, a Carl yeah, voice. If he yes. had a body, you'd go, oh, my God, poor Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Does Carl know? <laughs> Has anybody showed <laughs> Carl a mirror lately? Poor Carl. <laughs> yeah, well, he got used to having that flagpole stuck in his ear a year ago. Hey. Yeah, well, you know, if Carl had friends, he would not go to Walmart dressed the way he does. <laughs> you remember that horrible HBO show, Tales from the Crypt? Yeah. The Crypt Keeper? Uh-huh. Okay, well, uh, Iggy Pop did a, uh, did a tune, and what's her name off? Married with Children did a part. They had this guy, he's a musician, he's a, he has a rock club, and he's doing this uh, spectacular night, and Iggy Pop's the singer, and he's going to get a million dollars in cash, and he's going to steal it. 
But Sam Kennison plays his conscience. <laughs> it is. It, I've seen it so many times. The, the funny part has worn off. But just the, the imagination that went into this particular episode. You got you know Iggy Pop singing. And you got uh, Mrs. What's her name? Bundy. Peggy Bundy. Yeah. She's Peggy the, Bundy. She's going to steal from the thief. And all, just on and on crazy stupidness. But Sam Kennison is the thief's conscience in his head, screaming. That Sam Kennison screaming oh, thing. Oh, good God! That and see that—that's the tipper right there. <laughs> that just tips it right over into the totally loony toony. Ever see Kennison do the married one? Oh, I've I've seen uh, things oh, of Kennison, and I just oh. He used to tell you guy, "You see my face? Look at my face. This is what you get." And then right. Right two inches from his nose, and screams right in. This is what you're going to be like. <laughs> will you get married? Yeah. Will Will you guys, if you love me, will you, will you do me a favor? Will, will you shoot me, please? <laughs> you know, oh, I can go, but the wife says the dick has to stay here. You know, one of those kind, kind of marriages. The real not the real trusting ones. You know, people don't trust each other anymore either by by rules, you know, like nature has has hijacked all these r- rules that we live by. And what used to be yeah. common is now weird, and, and what is weird now used to be common. And I find myself being an old guy, doing old guy things, and getting along with everybody uh, that's that can see it. There's no age limit to it, but there's a mentality that recognizes whatever I am. Yeah. And it crosses all the barriers, the language, and all that crap. If they want to talk, believe me, and there's enough people on the Internet. Everybody speaks English if they're using the Internet. Can't help it because so much of the English language is uh, it's not transferable or translatable into theirs. So they got to use the English word, which is what I started out with about that. You know, uh, telling Cirque, there's got to be, you know, you use so few so compared to me so few words to say something so in my mind it tells me that there's a lot fewer ways to say shit so it's hmm. it's it's more work to deceive in danish than it is in english hmm. 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 well hmm. Her, her government lies to their people too well, that's part of government. Right, and right, right. The, those that are partaking okay. of that or participating in it. So these these kids that I've you know found in town, they seem to understand what I see. How? How? Two different lifestyles, two different countries, thirty years fucking apart. Yet they tell me the things I would tell them about government or state, for example. Well, because if you don't force a certain mindset onto people, they have a tendency to be able to find their own way. Well, it gives and me... And it's just one of those things that it just makes sense. Why do I have to have someone that doesn't know doodly squat about me <laughs> yeah. tell me yeah. how I can behave, what I can say, how I can dress, what I need to worship, what I need to... Why, why do I need that? Well, you know, if I, if I needed another mom or a mm-hmm. dad... I would go out looking for one, but right now I don't need another mom or a dad. Well, I've been arguing these particular details on this show with somebody else for a while. And I'm, you know, I'm of the mind of live and let live. And people think, well, yeah, but you got to have rules. And, and it seems to me, my experience and, and what I've got to say about it today is the rules that I live by, nobody ever says them out loud, ever. We just know them. Well, and I think a lot of that is because deep down inside, everybody knows. You know, well, there there are just certain things that you just plain, if you do, do not wish to have dire consequences come back upon yourself, you do not do dirt, certain <laughs> things to other people. Yeah, common sense. Well, then there's that innocent part where people go, I didn't know I was doing that. Well... If you told them the first time they were doing it, and the second time they claimed they didn't know they were doing it, I think you're being lied to the second time. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, it's an assumption. I can't prove it. There's no way to prove what other people mean or think or, you know, it's just my interpretation of something. Uh-huh. All right. Well, I'm leaning towards I want to be around people that build me up, not the ones that want to, you know, step all over my face telling me how funny it is. So, yeah. you know, it's a choice you make. And I've always said water seeks its own level. So I've evolved beyond a certain tolerance of something, whatever it is. It's me. It's not anybody else. It's just this is the way it's being uh, expressed in, in physical life. This is what's happening. It could be anything, but this is what it was, you know? Mm-hmm. If, uh, could it be a fight with a grocery clerk for all I know? But that's not what I saw. I saw something else. And so I'm going to go with my, you know, the way I feel. I'm very subjective. I'm not an objective thinker too often. I go with the way I feel about shit. Because the proof, what what proof? Yeah, show me a show me a picture of the Earth from the moon, and I'll believe you. Yeah. Show me a satellite picture of the Earth, and I'll believe there's satellites up there. But no, everybody just tells these freaking stories. And I got hired by a damn uh, what company, was it? I think it was, uh, hmm. I forget which one. Uh, anyway, I did work for an aerospace company after I left Ford, trying to trying to stay in, in, in the automotive, air force, you know, airplane kind of industry because it was paying good. And uh, mm-hmm. I think it was Hughes Aircraft I went to. And I didn't really like the job. So hmm, as soon as it was over, I didn't resign up for another you know, it took it in certain amounts of time because it was a, uh-huh. you filled this order through all, it was very weird. I had to not talk to people about what I did. I didn't know what I was fucking doing, but whatever I was doing, I wasn't allowed to talk about it. It was supposed to be part, some assembly part of a part to a satellite thing. And all I can think of when I look back on that is they worked so hard to make sure the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing. How could they put anything together? Yeah, that whole compartmentalization stuff, you know, where it's on a need-to-know basis, and you don't have a need-to-know. Right. So, so how does, where, what level do you have to get to mm-hmm. before you need to know any of this other than, you know, someone is keeping inventory on, we've got this many parts, we've got this many parts, we've got this... I don't know. I compared it to living with my parents when I was a kid. If I would have, if my parents would have tried to to treat me like that, it would have never worked. You know, you can't talk to your brother about this on Tuesday between eight and five, or I will beat you. Well, it looks like I'm gonna get a beating because you ain't telling me what to fucking say or when to say it. But here I I hired into this job. And it tilted my moral character, and I was doing things against my will for money that it didn't like. And when I realized it, I went, I ain't going to do this no more. Yeah. And I started that at a young age with this thing about, I don't want to do that. Who the fuck are you to tell me what I can do and what I can't do? Well, we feed you. Well, good. I'll go get a job and feed myself. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I've been working since I was young. Hustled my first job. I must have been nine years old, you know, because I wanted to go to the swimming pool and I wanted to go to the hamburger shop, but I could only get enough money from <laughs> mommy and daddy for the for the swimming pool. If I wanted to eat, it was come home and eat. No, I wanted to go to this burger place. I had to figure out how I was going to get money. So I went to the bakery next door and asked them if they could give me a job, <laughs> and they yeah. did. They gave me a dollar an hour for unloading stuff, and then I had money to go next door and go get, you know. And they all knew. All the grown-ups were talking. Hey, this little kid wants a little something. Give him a job so he can come over here and spend it on food. <laughs> I think, like, a burger was, like, 30 cents, and fries was, like, a quarter or so. It was cheap, but I didn't have it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I understand. I'm well, I realize that, I but mean, you can't do that anymore. Now you got to be no, licensed. No, God, no. God, my granddaughter was wanting to get a job this coming summer, but she's not going to be 16 
by the yeah. time summer starts, yeah. and so yeah. she's pretty much screwed out of getting a job. <sighs> See, and you she, and you can't you have be, to be sixteen or older. Yeah, and, and a lot of places it's eighteen or older. You can't be an individual and do anything on your own because the state will not allow it. You you need permission to do everything. Should I just did? Now you need to beg for. A, a, let me have a permission, permission to do slip. that. So yeah. wait a minute, and then they tax you. I oh, shit tax. Are you kidding me? Wow, <laughs> working working where you got to pay a tax is your own choice because there's plenty of well in my life, my day, there were plenty of jobs that just didn't pay. They paid cash. Uh huh. Yeah, and there were plenty of people that would hire you off the books of their business, so they wouldn't have to pay that. All those freaking taxes to the state and insurances and whatever else they had. Do you remember all that crap was, um, they didn't have much, but there was unemployment insurance and uh, something else in case you get hurt or whatever. And fuck. luckily for me, I've never had an accident on a job. If I did have anything go wrong, it was private. I was doing something for a friend or myself, but I've never had an employment where I got hurt. Try and think of. Nope. What? Nope. What, what? I mean, I have. I've worked place well when I worked at the school. Uh, when my girls were little, little, mm-hmm. I was a lunchroom lady, mm-hmm. and I I did get burned. Ouch! Once, but, oh, yeah. You know, it's because the fryer we were frying uh, donuts and stuff for breakfast, and the fryer popped, and oh, hot grease yeah. came up and got Flattered. me on the arm. But, yeah. Accident. But you know that's yeah. that's basically about the worst I've been. But and on still, the that's job not first. just careless, stupid. That's just being in the wrong spot where life went yeah. pop. Yeah. Yeah, like, when shit happened. Yeah, like you know, they're gonna put a meteor tax on shit so that <laughs> in case the Earth gets hit by a meteor, they got a, a fund to save us. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> and you know, speaking of getting hurt on. There are places now, and ADM, uh, I know when I worked at ADM, they ugh, they were horrid. There is no such thing as an accident. Really? It is improper planning and improper maintenance. Wow. They never and heard so of human if, error? Are you kidding oh, me? Oh, uh, no. There is no such thing as an accident. And wow. if there was an accident that happened somewhere on the, on site at the elevator, they and I know of two elevators where they had you know, someone got hurt, and they fired the whole crew. Hmm. Because you are supposed to be your, I get the whole, you're supposed to be your brother's keeper. Yeah. But if you've got someone that just decides for some stupid-ass reason that, well, you know, this isn't going to take long. I don't need to have my safety harness, or I don't need to have my hard hat, and then something falls and hits them in the head, and they go to the hospital or whatever. They fire the whole crew. Because that's, that's the mindset. And it's it's getting more and more prevalent with some of these places. If if one person does something stupid or forgetful, hmm. the whole shooting match wow. gets fired. Wow, where'd the individual go? You ever feel like you've where, been absorbed? Where did the personal responsibility go? I've got plenty of that and plenty of people to answer to if I don't. Well, it's always someone else's fault, and it's a no, group no, no, kind of thing. No, no, not where I live. I, I think where I live, I get treated uh, equally, and everybody, yeah, but, everybody here you know, does. That's a, that's a mindset that they're they're coming up with now. It's someone else's fault, and if y'all, wow. and if this person had something happen, then y'all should have been paying attention to keep them from doing that, and so y'all need to. Hmm. I mean, that to me, that's like the corporal punishment that my dad did when we were kids. Hmm. You know, if nobody fessed up for something, we all got lined up along the couch and the belt came off. Mm-hmm. That's just, yeah. you know, and everybody got a whooping until someone fessed up. Well, there was only two of us and I was the oldest, so guess what? <laughs> yeah, you usually caught it. No matter what, it was always my fault because I was older. I shouldn't have treated, you know, I shouldn't have led him yeah. astray and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you should have known better. Yeah. yeah. I've heard that one before. Hey, I was the oldest daughter. it's the price of society, you know. Mm-hmm. They're so full of these bullshit fucking stories that they hear. They really believe that the system that they work in 
does things like that. So they emulate what they think is correct. Only the truth of the whole matter is, uh, in my opinion, anyway. We're just bullied and lied to from the day we're born until they plan us. Everything in the middle. If you find a few minutes of fucking happiness, grab it. Because this life is not, uh, it's not operated for us to enjoy it. It's operated for us to function as a thing in it. And if you refuse to function and do your little fucking uh, thing job, people will try to get you back into the fold. Oh, yeah. If you aren't a good little cog in the mechanism. Yep. There you go. Well, when was the last time somebody tried to retrieve you? Do you, I mean, can you even put your finger on it? Or are you just kind of numb to the whole thing and that just blows over you? Because, uh, wow. uh, all right, being married to Sir, actually, uh-huh. I was a lot tougher. I could give two flying fucks about what anybody thought, said, or did. And then I married this Danish woman, and over the years, I've gotten kind of sensitive, like a mm-hmm. girl. And I figure, you know what? <laughs> well, and it's, I guess it's kind of laughable, but, you know, if, if it has my attention, whatever it is, I have been taught by my people, if it has your attention, it requires your attention. Do something. Okay, the something you do, make it fucking work. Don't don't be wishy-washy. Like, you know, sometimes you need to try something twice. But if you fail two times in a row and you fail a third time, the third time, you're the fool. So, hmm. Yes. Well, I like that mentality. I like the way that story works out. It suits me. There you go. So I go for the, you know, three strikes and you're done. I don't, I don't do this no more thing. And I'm not shy about it. I think I'm pretty upfront with people. You know, when they talk to me and they listen to what I say, I'll tell them. You know, you wipe your ass on my curtains. You're never coming in here again. So if you wipe your ass on my curtains, guess where you're never being invited back to? Yeah. Why are you surprised? I think I was pretty clear. Please don't shit on my living room floor. I don't like it. Well, and we live in this world where people do a whole shitload of talking, like I appear to, and not very much listening. But I seem to not do much listening, yet everything in life that's gone my way, so to speak, has been a result of taking the advice of another carbon-based life form before me. So I think I've done my... Uh, I do my listening to uh, improve my life, to make things better for me. And I think that as a byproduct of that, the people I encounter, they get the, you know, they get the good instead of the shit. I'm wondering if you're developing the, that um, the ability to... There are certain individuals that you actually listen to, and then there's other ones that not even a conscious effort. They're just automatically wah 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 wah. Rarely. So very rarely now. Yeah, but I yeah. To a there's because if something is upsetting me, it's not you upsetting me. What I and what I have to face about life is my associating with you is not working good. Well, you know, if I got a splinter in my finger, I'm not putting electrical tape on it, and I'm going to dig the fucking thing out and get it out. There you go. Because you know, if you just covered it up, you're going to get it infected, and then you're going to be worse off than you were in the first place. Uh, pour some peroxide on it, and that'll draw it out. All right, same thing, but the same principle <laughs> applies. Is you want it yeah. to be removed. You don't. You don't. You know, bring in more stuff and start building a condominium on your splinter. You, you get rid of it. So that's where I'm at with life. You know, if it's not pleasing me anymore, I, I ain't doing it. And I understand that. And I'm going to blame that decision on being an old fart. There you go. That's right, little missy. Back when I was your age. (laughs) (laughs) Both ways uphill. 
call us old farts because we're just gassy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but uh, it's you don't get our age without learning something, period. Yeah. Okay. But oh, yeah. it, it, if, if I ever, I feel like if I ever stop listening to the outside input, then I'm finished. I'm not. I I know everything. I don't need you anymore. I'm done. I know this. I, 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 I. No, there's lots of shit I don't know. There you well, go. every time I learn something, I find out I know even less than I thought I did. So it's never ending, and that's my beef with all this freaking uh, state. They've got you bombarded from every side. Finance is fucked up. Religion is fucked up. Education. Name. You can write a list of thirty things on the right. They're all fucked up. And here well, we are. They're all control mechanisms. And we're all using them. Some of them. I'm using some of them. I'm cut back on some, and I'm using others because there's no opt out. I'm up being held hostage against my will. <laughs> You're a selective slave. Yeah, but uh, I I've known that since the beginning. Though I mean, I was willing to give up the freedom part, but not the personal freedom part. Yeah, I get that. I mean, you know, if my neighbor said, hey, you know what? I really appreciate it if you didn't play your music at, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning at level 10. And then at 2.45, I turn the fucking stereo on. I don't think he's going to be a happy man. So Probably not. So why would doing that, why would going out of my way to rock him, what would that prove? Oh, look at me. I pissed him off again. I'm so cool. And when when I start looking at situations in that light, whether I'm right or wrong, I'm thinking it. It's got my attention. Hmm. My, see? So I live in this self-fulfilling prophecy kind of mindset. And whatever I want in life, I can have it. All I got to do is go do it. It. Whatever it is, it's mine. Mm-hmm. If I put myself into it. But it's not. it's not like you can just... Well, I'm done with this now. No, no, no. You got to in my my reality, I have to see things through to the end. So, hmm. And yet, you are the one that decides what the end is. Very much. Yeah. I have a 50% say and I ain't doing this. Well, I got, you know, I got lectured on the the real liberty media. What kind of liberty side is this? And then I thought about it. Well, I've got my liberty and I'm going to say no. What do you think of that? That's and see, a, that is your expressing liberty. Exactly. And that's the premise I'm doing this on. I'm protecting myself from something I don't want to do by using the word no. I ain't going to do it. I'm expressing my liberty in, on a site that doesn't respect liberty, according to him. So, hmm. see, it's all how you look at it. Yeah. yeah. You can make yeah, a positive... Yeah, because demands that you do that something. You do, yeah. yeah, according to their definition yeah. of liberty, yeah. they just encroached upon your liberty. Exactly, and yet they they don't have the awareness to see the two sides are the same freaking coin. You know, that's well, the nature of our life is opposites. Me and Cirque are day and fucking night. Let me tell you, but the together is this other person the two of us make. <laughs> yeah. Well, tonight she got into a hurry and cut her finger on a knife because she was rushing through something. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, usually I would have done that, but she was in a rush and wanted to, so she did it herself instead and got hurt. And mm-hmm. in some weird way, I don't, not physically, but emotionally, when, you know, when somebody close to me gets physically hurt, it, it's upsetting. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, I'm getting to the age or the maybe the sensitivity girly shit where I'm, I'm starting to pay attention to how words make me think or what they make me think. And I don't want to be a victim of thought. No, no, no. I want to control my thinking. Not. I don't want to follow it. I want to direct it. So I have to be in charge of it, however I do that. See, and that's I, I've mm-hmm. gotten to the point now where if something upsets me, I have to take a step back and figure out why it upset me. Was it oh, okay. because yeah. of what they yeah. said, yeah. how they said it, yeah. what they did, how yeah. they did it? Do did I interpret it as it 
being intended to cause me discomfort or pain or mm -hmm. anger, you know, and so, and it's not one of those things that it takes hours to contemplate. These are all little things that run through my mind in just seconds. And then I make the decision, well, you know, if, if I must have felt something to that, so I need to kind of dig a little bit deeper, mm -hmm. but it's not something I'm going to sit there and ponder over at the moment. I'm just going to say, okay, I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know, right now I am mm -hmm. not of the mindset that I want to deal with this shit. Well, yeah, um, yeah, I think that's, that's a good way to, well, I'm, I'm also looking for, you know, a defining reason and outside of, I don't want to do this anymore. I can't really justify it outside of I'm just putting my foot down with something mental that I don't want to do. I don't I don't need to justify why. I just don't. But, well, you had you had a boundary that was crossed and that's why you got uncomfortable because a boundary hmm. got crossed. And you know it's like the so truth sensitive. doesn't need defending. Hmm. Your gut instincts hmm. don't require explanation or defending. If no, your but they'll gut be challenged. tells you this ain't right and you're uncomfortable and you don't want to do that anymore, yeah. that is your gut instinct letting you know, hey, hey, that that something just crossed your boundary and you said no more of this shit. Yeah. So you know, I'm I'm like if I feel weak if I keep bending, you know, twice is is my limit, you know. If I keep giving in to somebody else's wants when I don't want to, I, no. See, it, and boundary yeah. pushers do that. Yeah. They will push your boundaries yeah. until you give in, and yeah. then they will push until you give in a little more, and mm. they'll push into, and they'll keep pushing until you. It's Wayne and I were having this discussion the other day because he's he's got a coworker that is <clears throat> interesting. Mm. We'll just. Put right, it like that. Right, right. But he's one of those people that he will push your button and push your button and push your button and push your button. And then when you finally have had enough and you snap back and say, back off, dude, hmm. then you're disrespecting yeah, him. Yeah. And I looked at him yeah. and I said, honey, he is just like your typical backstabber. Hmm. Stab you in the back, stab you in the back, and then send you the cleaning bill because you yeah. dared to bleed on, on his him. his carpet, yeah. Wow. Well, um, how and there are people like that. I understand the the, the, the reality of it, but I guess what I'm baffled at, even at my age, is how did we get here? And and those of us that understand that that this was a designed plan, why are we not able to collectively understand a way out of it? You know, we're always life just pits us against each other. Whether, you know, like whatever is going on in my head about this thing with Vincent, it's not Vincent, it's me. Most people don't want to go that far with it. You know, they want to blame the other guy. You, this, and you, well, okay, I'm reacting to something. So instead of fighting the reaction, I'm going to go with it like I always do. Because I'm happier in the end, not other people. <laughs> you know, I get to the point where I don't really give a shit how you feel about this. <laughs> well, and it really, you're right. It's not about Benny. It's about. But no, it's not. It's he just got happened not, to be the not, individual yep, that yep, did it. Whatever it is, wherever I went with the words, it's me. I understand yeah. that. And But, yeah. you know, the drama part of all this crap is going to make somebody get, think this and think that. And I don't want to use excuses. I know. I mean, I'm very self aware. To a level, but then defining it. Ah, fuck. Who knows? Well, and see, that's where I think that the, in this current paradigm or reality or whatever, the ego mm. is what is, you know, focused on. Mine is getting to... fragile then, man, because, uh, wow. I didn't know I was so sensitive like this. Uh, I better get some tampons and yeah, hairspray. But, uh, no, because I don't know that it's necessarily... <clears throat> that your ego got bruised. It was just that you have something and you said, okay, I'm done. Yeah. there is something about this situation that is not comfortable. Yeah. And I got to, and I got to quit until I figure <laughs> out why I'm uncomfortable with it. And then I can process and move along. And I get that. And that's not, that's not an ego talking because mm. ego is a lash out. And ego is blaming someone else because ego always likes to be stroked. Oh yeah. Sure, and I've got one. I just try to keep it under check, you know. 
because uh, I got a wife. I think that's mm-hmm. that's a you know, and not to say there's anything uh, effeminate about the way Vinny behaved or I behaved. It's just I've got that closeness to somebody already, where you know the words they use affect me, and I I don't yeah. want I don't want anybody else to have that power, you know, over me in a situation in so in a social situation. And radio and yet, to, is still social to me. Does he really have power over you, or is the reason that it bothered you because you care? The, well, that's the point. Is I, it shouldn't? It should be like uh, neutral, like most things to me are. But when I find myself getting uh, emotionally tied to words and shit, I generally get the fuck out because I don't I don't behave that way. So why am I doing it? I'm behaving out of my personal comfort zone. So no, it's got to stop. And whatever well, you know, whatever it is in life that gives people the gifts that they have, and the results of them aren't always good. I've done a, ho- a lot of horrible paintings in my life. But I went through the horrible ones to get to the good ones. You know, I'm thinking, and this just popped into my head, Hmm. that that whole thing of you always hurt the ones you love. And I think that's why some some people, when one person can say something and it will cut you to the quick, and another person would say the same damn thing, and it was just care. like water off a duck's back. Yeah. And the re- the difference is the one person you actually care about. Yeah, I you think act- that, yeah. And, and you yeah. care about their opinion and all that fun stuff. And the other one, it's like, eh, I don't really know you. And, I, you know, I'm not close to you. I don't have ties to you. Mm. And it that really is true. The ones that you care about mm. are the ones that can cut you to the quick because you care about them. Hmm. It's not that they're initially setting out to no, hurt but you. That, that's the that's the, the pretty much the, the answer that you're going to get logically thinking this through the way we've been taught. Mm-hmm. What, what you're saying, your side of that. My side's very selfish. I'm just, I don't know, I just don't, I get where I don't want to do something, then I, don't, I just don't see no reason to do it. I don't care what it is. And yet, you know what? We've been taught that selfishness is a bad thing, and it really isn't. I, I mean, know. it can be taken to the dark oh, yeah, side, but yeah. it's not necessarily <laughs> always a bad thing. Because being selfish could mean taking care of yourself first, because if you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be here to take care of someone else. Oh, yeah. I know. Some would look at that as being extremely selfish. Yeah. And yet, you're taking care of yourself so that you can take care of ten other people. Is that really selfish? I don't think so. No, but, but that's where that reckless, careless crap falls in. Like, start cutting her finger tonight in a hurry to, to because she had so much to do. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, mm, people. And that was a it's happen, it happens moment. Right. So, it, hmm, being angry about somebody having an accident is not the same as reacting in a negative way towards an uncomfortable conversation. Let's say that. Oh, yeah. I get that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've not usually been this sensitive. I've usually been a very, like, fuck you and your ass and just gone on with shit. <laughs> I and, know. And here I am, and I don't want to do that anymore. I, I'm, I think I'm evolving inside. So I'm on some wavelength is shifting. And I want to stop doing certain things. You know, it, it's well, like the the not smoking thing. If I wanted to quit smoking, I'd make up my mind and stop. That's but yeah. I'm not done yet. Me and Cirque discussed this. She talked about it on the radio. When she's done, she'll know it. It's got nothing yeah. to do with anybody else. It's a personal thing. Well, we all have this knowledge. We just haven't all had it brought out of us by other people. It's not an internal thing. You need somebody else to nurture you and help you see yourself the way they see you. It, yeah. It's a very, and that's hard. Well, no, that's the partnership thing. I, I guess maybe it's hard because we've had so little of it, but the best things come from a good partnership. But oh, it, yeah. it doesn't seem like I'm cut out to have more than one. Well, 
Uh, Gosh darn it, that's a horrible thing, isn't it? You're comfortable with one individual. Yeah. Stop and think of how yeah. many people in this world are not. <sighs> then you realize just exactly how blessed you are. Oh, you know what? Uh, We're out of time. Pretty much. Well, yeah, I don't. We we can always go over a few minutes if you want uh, to, or we can call it okay. a night. You call it because you're the guest. Well, I'm gonna have to get up and get some stuff done here in just a little bit. So then you uh, you want to got a closing thing because we butchered the, I tried to read his link and I made fun of it and it's pot fuck they make too much out of weed these idiots are fucking everybody over a stupid plant like a bunch of morons and the people go for it so fuck them they get what they deserve but I'm one of those people and I don't like what I deserve <laughs> well and so you're re-educating yourself and the the first key to re-educating yourself is realizing that some of the education that you got was not factual, was oh, not truthful. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm aware. Painfully. And so, therefore, you have to go through the whole process of weeding out what is not so. <laughs> got a whole lifetime of that input. Yes, you do. So, yes, you yeah. do. Everyone and then, does. And then you've got these things. Other other things happen, like something you could smell something or see something or hear something, and it takes your mind back to an event that you you're thinking about on a level you're not conscious of, but you uh -huh. feel makes you feel something weird. So, hmm. yeah, shifts in your behavior due to the input, all the kinds of this mental crap. That I don't, I don't want to be uh, controlled by that. I want to be in control of my reaction to the you know, input, and I'm not there yet. It's very difficult because I oh. haven't spent a lifetime really too awful concerned about who was out there. I just live in my life. Now it's different. You know, I'm really connected to somebody that that's you know real. It's, mm -hmm. it's not uh, an arrangement to to do any. And th this is something that just fucking went. Wow, I'll do that. And before this in life, things uh, things were made necessary by society and family. Where this was way different. So, hmm. lucky me. I yep. hope. Yeah, you found what I found by a fluke too. So I, you know, I know the a few details about that. But luck, luck, or whatever you fucking call it, good living, how insane that must be. Either one. I mean, it's just life. Life mm -hmm. is right there in front of everybody, and it's just shining in different levels of, of brightness. So you can see what you want to get. You know? And it's all out there for you if you want it. Whatever it is, make up your mind and go get it. I do. <laughs> yep. Anyway. Just be open to the possibilities. And thank you so much for joining me on this, you know, because uh, I, I have a horrible feeling about what I'm doing with Vince, but I, on another level, I'm, I'm, I've got to do this for myself. It's mm -hmm. got nothing to do with Vincent, but it's going to make it look like, ah, he's mad at Vinny, blah, blah. No, I'm just breaking up a, a, a radio team. I'm not, you know, I'm not mad at anyone. I'm just evolving. So there you go. Yeah. Thanks, I understand. everybody, for joining us on In a Perfect World with my guest co hostage, Graham Z. And you got anything profound you want to shut us down with, Miss Mary, or do you just want to say? <laughs> you know, sometimes the best things in life to do is to just go. <laughs> because <laughs> there are just times in life where you just have to do that and laugh at it. Is crying, and laugh at it. Crying will make your your lungs hurt. <laughs> well, yeah, and I look so much laughing. better laughing than crying. Oh my god! And my nose, I get booger bubbles. And yeah, it's gross. <laughs> I yeah, but I I can make my wife laugh until my ribs hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wayne can make me laugh yeah. to where I have to run yeah. to the bathroom. So, you know, it's, Lucky it's, us. It's, yeah, and then he just laughs even harder, and then he's standing at the doorway going, hurry up! <laughs> well, so, being as you get yeah. secret Grammy holiday plans with the grandkids, I won't see you on Saturday. I'm going to still do a table. Uh, okay. 
yeah, I gotta I gotta go down to my mom's tomorrow, and then I've got to go see kids, and I gotta get a hold of my oldest because her father in law passed away Sunday. So, yeah, oh, it's, it's it's been a weird week. Yeah, weird week. Well, if you're so, around next Tuesday, you know where to find me, and uh, I've moved this up to three o'clock on the East Coast. Uh, okay, okay. Make it a little bit easier for my wife. So there you go. Okay. Thanks a Are lot, you? everybody. Thank you, everybody. Have an awesome rest of your day. Over. See you. Love you. Bye. Out.